Welcome everybody. In this episode, we are going to start talking about multiple files being compiled down to a single program that can be executed as one. This is very important because as you get larger and larger projects, you're not just going to work with a single file. It would get very unorganized and pretty much impossible to build complex applications. So we're going to learn how to break out some of our content into separate files. Now we actually have a new sponsor for this section of videos, which is Visual Assist. So this is a Visual Studio plugin that will fill in gaps for C++, C, and C Sharp development. If you've been using Visual Studio for this series, and you want to get an overall better experience, then I suggest you check out Visual Assist. You can try it for free using the link down below. If you do decide to give Visual Assist a try, definitely use the link below as that will support my channel as well. So we are going to refactor some of our code, which is a word that means change the code without changing any of the functionality. This is usually done when you want to clean up your code and make the overall maintenance of the project easier, but you want everything to work the same. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this play game function and move it to a separate file. If you think of play game as a black box where you just pass it some guesses and the game will be played, then you don't need to have all of the details of the code in line here in the same file. Instead, we can move it to a separate file and we'll move that out of our brain storage since we only have so much local temporary storage in our brain. Think of it as like our RAM for our brain. So let's just get that out of here. So what we'll do is we will go into our project explorer here and you can expand this and see what we have so far. When you right click on your project, you can say add or add new and there's this option for a unit. This is what we'll end up using, but I want to show you one thing real quick. If you go to other and then individual files, you can see that we have the option for a CPP file or a C++ file. And then a unit, which is the CPP file and a header file. So the unit is basically going to create both of these, and when you split things out into multiple files in C++, you're often going to have paired two files, the C++ file and the header file. The header file acts as basically a description of what things are going to be able to be done with the C++ file. Think of it as the interface or the prototypes for the C++ code, but no actual execution. And then the C++ file is going to have that execution. The header file is what we'll actually import into our code. So with that blabbering out of the way, let's go ahead and click a unit here. Click OK. It's going to generate some code and you can see it's called unit1.cpp. We can save. We can name this something such as game. Save it and that'll change the include as well here. Now in our project, you'll see we have the game.cpp and inside of that, that's actually two files. So the C++ file and the header file. What we're currently looking at is this one here. There's also the header file, which looks like this. Now, if you're following along and you're not using C++ Builder, then you'll just need to create the game.cpp file for C++ and then the game.h file. What do you actually put in them? Well, it's going to look like this. For the header file, I would recommend copying it like so. You don't need these comment lines, so we can get rid of those. So it'll just look like this. And here is where we're actually going to type our code. Basically what this does is if you import game.h multiple times, it'll prevent that from happening. So if not defined game h, then we're going to define it. And then we will end the if. This is that directive syntax similar to what we have over here in the include. So it's a little bit different but that is how you basically say, hey, if we've already imported game.h, don't do it again. Now, that's the header file. As for the game.c++ file, let's go ahead and open that. This is going to have some stuff generated with C++ Builder. I'm going to remove this stuff. With the exception, it is best practice here to include that header file. And when we're including one of our custom files, we will put it in quotes. So we will say game.h. Now we can actually jump between these two files using these tabs down here, which is kind of nice. What we'll do is we will define our function prototypes here inside of this file. And what that will look like is if you go back to our code that we have our function, it's going to be this piece right here. 
So we will copy that and bring that over to the header file, pasting that here with the semicolon. And then the entire function is what we will put inside of the C++ file for game. So game.cpp, paste that here. Now inside of YouTube.cpp or whatever your main, whatever the file that contains your main function is called, go ahead and just delete that function. So we will delete that here. Make sure I get all that removed. And we will just need to include that header file. So include and inside of quotes game.h. Now one other problem is that anytime we are using namespace standard, this is going to be required for every single file. So inside of game.cpp, you can see we have C out, but there is no using namespace standard. So you could go ahead and prefix everything with std, or you could just take this line, copy it, and bring that over to this file as well. So after we have that include, we will say using namespace standard. Additionally, we will need to include any things that are in this file. So we would say include IO stream, include string in our case, and include, I think it was C standard lib. So these are the same as this over here. You can remove the ones you're not using anymore over in this file, but I think we're still using IO stream and string, so we'll keep those. And now in theory, I should be able to run. Let's see if we forgot anything else. And it compiles and runs. Yes, I wanna play a game. No, I have not beat the game, and we'll choose a medium difficulty. And you can see we're still outputting <laughs> that the, the correct answer. So that's kind of off topic from this video, but if you're building this game, you'll not want to do that. So remove that line. So hopefully that was helpful. As you can probably see, it's a little bit of a setup, but when you figure this process out, you can simplify your main project code and you can just have this function library containing everything important. So this video hasn't had the instructions to do multi-file compilation if you're not using C++ Builder. So if that's your case, I have another C++ series where we've done something similar. So you can look that up on my channel. That's if you're using G++. And we also talk about make files, which can make things easier, but definitely not as easy as using an IDE where you just hit the play button and you're good to go. Thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for the next episode where we're going to modify some of our code to learn about different loop structures. Thank you and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.